The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Ryan Hoppy and Fatsit. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Other stations are tuned in too. What's going on? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. Hanging out with you for the next hour. 856 49 Hoppy. And it's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. And um, I was talking to this girl this week on Facebook dating. And she listened to my podcast and she said she enjoyed it, which was quite the uh, confidence boost. But there was one thing she said that a lot of people have said, besides the fact that I'm sexy, that I wanted to address to the audience. I wanted to explain to the audience. When I'm giving out the number 856-49-HOPPY, it's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You get the whole idea. When I give that out, this show is a podcast, but a radio show in a podcast format. So you can leave me those messages on demand, and then I will play it on the next show. Because I see that I am getting listens from across the country, and I'm not bragging. I do pretty well for little to no promotion besides radio shows just talking crap about you. You catch the vibe. You know what I mean? Like, it's different. It's unique. It's very bizarre here, but to all the cities out there that are listening, you can always message me. You can always leave me a message when you use the iHeartRadio app. When you use the app, search up Hoppy Radio, H-O-P-P-E Radio, and there we have a talkback feature so you can leave me a message, man. It's just everything's going good over here. We're having good vibes. We're having a good time. You know what I mean? Uh, Not at Twitter, though. Hot topic. Twitter is kind of falling asleep. <laughs> kind of dying forever. This morning, billionaires debating the direction of the site that has an outsized impact on the spread of information. I love the way this news clip begins. Billionaires deciding the future of this world. That's the problem, man. You got about a hundred people that are billionaires that run everything on this planet and the only difference between them and us is that they have the money they're gonna die someday they crap and they're just as dumb as us because they came into this world and they don't know what they're doing we get one try on this planet we don't get a second try we're all doing everything the first time you know what i mean we're never gonna live a second time so you're letting these idiots who are living this one life run everything jeff bezos And then uh, the moron known as Elon Musk. I notice a lot of people, they really think he's smart. (laughs) I'm not saying he has everything because of his much smarter, more normal father. But Google Elon Musk's dad calls into Kyle and Jackie O, a radio show down in Sydney. One of my favorite radio shows of all time. And Kyle Sandalin's on there and Jackie O. They asked Elon his dad about if he was proud of his son and he didn't really seem like he was very proud of him elon musk has everything because of his father so when you have this rich spoiled baby out there trying to run the world you're kind of screwed That's kind of the problem with privilege. That's kind of the problem with money is if you have a parent that has everything in the world and then you produce kids, not all of them are going to be as smart as you. A lot of times kids will get something as an adult early on. They'll get a lot of success and sometimes they run with it and sometimes they don't. And a lot of times the people that get it because of their parents It's a lot of pressure on them. Oh, but if you fail, dad will just bail you out. You know what I mean with uh, Elon Musk? If everything fails with him, 
his dad will help him out. Same with the Trumps. Like, if I go out there and fail, my dad's been dead for eight years. You know what I mean? So I have, like, much more to lose. This morning, billionaires debating the direction of the site that has an outsized impact on the spread of information just before the midterm election. Elon Musk tweeting overnight, Twitter needs to become by far the most accurate source of information about the world. Former owner Jack Dorsey replying, accurate to who? Oh, shut the hell up, Jack. You're the one, you jag off. You were literally muting anything that had to do with Hunter Biden's sex tape. Oh, now you're going after the guy that leans more to the right, because I'm Jack, and I lean to the left. I hate both political parties. You are a part of the censorship too, buddy boy. Shut up, Jack. In a report from Bloomberg, unconfirmed by NBC News, the company has reached out to dozens of fired employees yeah. to ask them back. Because Please come back. Elon's ruining everything. We know we paid you a salary for nine jobs in one. Some were laid off by mistake, according to two people familiar with the moves. Yeah. This just days after Elon Musk suddenly Elon fired Musk roughly Musk. half the staff. I found that my uh, work laptop was remotely wiped and access to Slack and Gmail revoked. Oh, oh can you imagine that? You're like, Twitter just screwed me. Sources within the company say the layoffs include staff that filtered out hate speech and studied misinformation. Critic yeah, we don't really need you around here. The people that are actually trying to improve Twitter, we want it to be, we want it to be as toxic as possible. When the hell have you ever gone on Twitter and been like, man, I feel better about myself? Because you can get compliments all you want. You can announce a new job or whatever, and you can get eight tweets that go, you are the best. You are the best. You are the best. And then you get the fourth tweet. You are a talentless idiot. You have everything because of one individual person that says you have everything and you suck and I hope you fail. But you just had three other tweets saying how great it was. Oh, but this person spread misinformation about you. I'm Enough. It's all dumb. Bunch of morons out there. I swear. And you know, Twitter was like, yeah, there's a lot of hatred and uh, misinformation that goes on your platform. There's a lot of things that aren't the best vibe. Can we uh, adjust that? Can we change that? And they're like, no, but that's what keeps people going back. It's like looking at a picture of your ex on social media. Like, you don't really want to do it, but sometimes you're like... It's now worry that Twitter's ability to police misinformation is compromised with the midterm elections only a day away. So that was from the past. Because mm -hmm. <sighs> the midterms changed. They're updated. Everyone that was meant to be elected was elected. And that's the uh, political talk from the show. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yes. Following segment was brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com. When I tell you that they are the best printing company in all the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. I wouldn't lie to you. Okay. Here's how it goes. Here's how it works. You go on social media and you search up West Chase Printing. And when you go there and you tell them that I sent you, they will hook you up. Happy hour. Happy hour. Well, it was good while it lasted, I guess. But Sheriff, the glory hole is the pride and joy of Dougal County. Fella found an even older glory hole two towns over. Lord knows I ain't looking forward to telling the tourism board about this. Such an elegant concept. A simple lowly hole to commemorate his glory. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Ah, welcome back. Hi, I'm your host, Ryan Hoppy. 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773. Tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Snapchat me, Ryan Hoppy Radio, and on the iHeartRadio app. Search up Hoppy Radio and leave us a message on the talkback feature. Let's get into it. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! 
Hey, it's America for Hollywood Life with your Car Jenner Roundup, starting with Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's fickle fans. Since these two have split, multiple fans have criticized the beauty mogul for her fashion choices that she's seemingly been making on her own. Well, during an end credit on the Kardashians this week, Kim finally spoke her mind about these trolls and she- Yeah, let those anonymous people get to you. Shows how miserable you are, Kim. You put up this facade. I am an independent woman with no redeeming personality at all, but I swear I'm actually unique. And then when people critique you, you take it to heart. You're all talk. And she decided to clap back for the people who always have something to say about her style. One I love when they try to make it seem like it's a noble thing that she is doing, responding to the trolls. Yeah, she clapped back at them. Yeah, she really got him by responding. Wow, you're really showing that you're confident in yourself when you're letting other people's opinions cause you to have to make a post about it. People can run their mouth about me and there are people that run their mouth about me and I don't care, life's too short. When I'm laying in the ground, none of that will matter. And Kim should have that attitude. But when you are spreading information, you're actually promoting their hate. If she were to just make these posts of abundance and say over and over again, yeah, I'm just happy to be alive, no one would notice the hate comments. But when you give the hate attention, it's like an STD or something. It just continues to grow. A particular post-divorce outfit that Kim mentioned was this red flame look that got so many negative reviews. But the funny part is, according to the reality star, this is one of the outfits that Kanye picked and styled. Kim went on to add that if her and the rapper were together, everyone would think it was the coolest outfit in the world. Hence the fickle fans. But stay on Kanye West because he's going on an interesting cleanse. Last night, the Yeezy designer tweeted that he would be taking a 30-day cleanse from alcohol, adult films, and not talking to people. Now Please, just take a lifetime cleanse, man. You've made enough good music. If I never heard another headline about Kanye West again, if I never heard from Kanye West again, I wouldn't care. I would not care. He's made so many good songs in the past that I don't need anything. He pretty much, uh, he peaked it off the grid, 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 where he talks about wanting to be off the grid, but all he ever does is be on the grid. So I don't know why he made the song, 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 song. Soon after Ye tweeted this, he went on to go for a couple more rants involving other people. But maybe the verbal part of the fast doesn't include social media. Oh, I thought he was going to like not talk about other people. That was like his goal. And then after that, in the post, continues to talk about other people because he's a sociopath, an unhappy liar, and a creep. If the behavior of Kanye West was done by a deadbeat dad in Pinellas Park, we would be outraged. Oh, but it's just Kanye West being an expressive artist, getting kicked out of soccer games for his kid and being a deadbeat father. He's being a unique artist, man. It's a part of the character, bro. You know it's a part of his character? That he's a scumbag? Either way, this announcement comes on the heels of all the backlash he has received for his hateful comments and losing his billionaire status. He's just not cool anymore, man. I was a huge fan growing up. I bought all those CDs. I love old Kanye. And then he just gets older. And he becomes such an unredeeming asswipe. There's nothing that's positive about him. Any positive energy I feel about Kanye West is when I listen to old Kanye. None of his new work makes me go, oh, I feel so good about myself. Like, what has he done recently for us? Nothing. After the Adidas drop. But what do you all think? Will Kanye be able to do this fast for 30 days? Maybe 15? Let us know your picks in the comments. <laughs> all right, but stay on Kanye West because Kim Kardashian unfortunately has to take the backlash as well for his actions. Yeah, you, you had like 90 kids with him. You're going to always be kind of attached to him. Recall this week we reported that Ye stormed out of his son's soccer game after getting into an argument with one of the parents. It was always uncomfortable growing up. There was this one kid who his dad drank a lot at the games, man. He really drank a lot. And he would be getting kicked out. But this was also 2002, and people just kind of allowed it. It was like, oh, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm not going to even say a fake name because I don't want to put the energy out there. But, oh, it's just insert dad being insert dad. Well, now Hollywood Life has exclusively learned from a source close to Kim that she has been getting heat from other parents over her hot-headed ex-husband. Yeah, I can imagine the other pretentious Beverly Hills imbecile families 
with whatever gender they identify as. I was not just signaling out soccer moms that get really obnoxious at games. I can assure you, I bet that combination of pretentious imbeciles and Kanye West does not mix well. I bet that's not the best vibe ever. Some trophy wife and Kanye West on the sideline. <laughs> and then the like macho nerdy husband that got the trophy wife because of his money. So he's not really there to defend his, his wife. And Kanye West is just yelling at the woman. He's like, you leave her alone. I was a big fan of Gold Digger 17 years ago. But you're really letting me down. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Microphone was not on. Professional 101. Uh, that was actually me addressing my negative comments to myself in my brain at all times. You know what I'm saying? You know how I was just saying that Kim Kardashian addresses mean comments and then manifests mean comments? I just address negativity on this show. I'm insane, man. If you think your life is hard, imagine having my brain. And then kind of close your eyes for a few minutes and go, Life's pretty good. Happy hour will be right back. This following segment has been brought to you by the best barber in all of the Bay Area. When I tell you that Rich Keeley, listen, I can sit here every single time and tell you that Rich Keeley is the best, but you got to make it happen, Captain. You got to go to richkbarber.com. When you go there, you sign up for an appointment. You might have to wait a few days. You, you might. You just might have to wait a few days because he might be booked up. But would you rather get a half-ass haircut from some 20-year-old or go to Rich Keeley, who's been doing it for a long time, man? He is legit one of my best friends, a good dude. For all the info, it's at richkbarber.com. Happy hour. Happy hour. I'd like a uh, $9,000 prostitute, please. Oh, do you have nine $1,000 ones? Yeah, good. And if you got an albino, send her up too. And like uh, 20 minutes, I'm going to be asleep. So get them up here. I had like half a bottle of melatonin, six beers, this whole f-ing bucket of chicken. Oh, the Sandman is coming. Happy hour. Happy hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Other stations are tuned in too. Oh, yeah. 856 49 Hobby. It's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. All right. For me to address this next topic that's been really driving me nuts that I really think would be good content for the show, but for me to address the future good content of this show, I have some, um, I have some breaking news. Now, what I'm about to talk about on this show, you will never hear me ever say a bad thing about this person. Because all things come to an end in life. But your boy, Ryan John Hoppy, age 29, is on Tinder and Bumble and Facebook dating. And why would your friend, Ryan John Hoppy, be on Tinder and Bumble? Because Ryan John Hoppy is now single. Yes. Me and my ex-girlfriend have gone separate ways. And the only reason I'm addressing this, people have been asking, man, over and over. We are friends. Everything is good. It's what is best. You'll never hear me trash her. I was such a despicable piece of garbage when I dumped her, when I broke up with my second to last girlfriend, I was bashing her on Drew Garabo Live, 52 Reasons Why I Hate You. None of that. It's like it never happened. This was a great time, a lot of good photo shoots, a lot of memories on 102.5 The Bone, but all things end. And the reason that I am addressing my breakup, and that's all I'm going to ever say, ever. It's like the, like the uh, relationship 
is like sealed shut and in like a CIA agency's closet. You know what I mean? Like it's private info. It's classified. I will never speak a bad word about my ex. Never. A nice person. I wish her nothing but the best. And like that, guess what? Guess what happens right after that? Money. And like that, he's gone. Oh, happy hot topic. Also, you'll never know if I have a wife. I am never. If the next girlfriend I get, I am never putting up a selfie. I, 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 I'm just saying that right now. I might even have a new girlfriend now. Here's the thing. So I'm back on Facebook dating, and dear Lord, oh my God. I'm not going to sit here and critique Facebook dating, Tinder, Bumble, because it's all hot garbage. I will tell you, I did a good looking. That was a confidence boost. But there's one critique I have. One critique. Now, I'm always pretty good at the pull-out method or using a condom, so I don't have any kids. Almost 30 years old, I don't, I don't want to announce that I'm never going to have kids, but I would have to have kids within the next 10 years with somebody in my age group or then be really rich at 40 and marry a 25-year-old. That sounds like a plan. Like the clock's ticking on the millennial generation and not a lot of kids are getting produced. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I mean, it's getting produced by idiots that don't know how to pull out. Like when you say, I don't know how to pull out, you just didn't want to get out. It was too much fun. It's not worth it. That 20 seconds of glory is now worth the 18 years. And I love when parents go, it's just for 18 years. Like, yeah, you got to kind of let your kids leave the nest, but that's a deadbeat attitude. Only two more years and I'm done with my daughter and she'll have raging daddy issues and be putting her kids on a dating app at age 29 because I never really gave her any attention. Deadbeat dads are not scorned enough because men get offended by it. Men go, we can't be deadbeats. There are so many deadbeat dads out there. It's ridiculous. It's out of control. You know what else I've been seeing? Dumbest trend ever. And I don't know. Let me know. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Happy Radio, and you can email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. Here's the thing. I'm not going to critique somebody for being a parent. I'm not going to sit here and tell them how to do it. But there is one critique I have that I've especially seen on Facebook dating, that I will be utterly confident in ripping into, that I will be utterly confident in talking trash about. And that is using your kids in the profile pictures on your profile. I have seen, listen, I know it's got to be hard hard being a single mom trying to date because men have needs men are essentially big babies and we want attention and you got to split the time with the dad with your job with hanging out with the kid it's almost impossible for a single mom to date honestly single dad's a little easier because like you have more free time but the women usually get the kids at the home base and then the dudes get them on the weekend so during the week the dudes can date Single moms have it really hard where it's impossible. I've gone on a date with a single mom. She was lovely, but it's impossible to book a date because it's like, I gotta do this with my kid. I gotta do this. And that's fine. The kid comes first. But you can just tell us that you're a single mom and not put your kid's life on the line by putting your kid on your profile. I have seen so many single moms take selfies with their kids or even a school picture of them in front of the school as one of the pictures for a dude to swipe right on. And this isn't even that anonymous. At least with Tinder and uh, Bumble, it'll say something like, my name's Ryan on there. So it'll say Ryan, age 29, and it says what town I live in. But on Facebook dating, which is only on the mobile app, It'll tell you who you have mutual friends with. So if it's some unique name, I'll literally go on that person's page and look at the girl. Sorry, if that sounds creepy, I'm not going to waste my time. And here's the thing. Here's the problem. 
I'm just trying to make sure that you don't have crazy daddy issue eyes. That that's a, that's all. But you post a picture of your kid on there, and then you put your hometown, and then you tag the elementary school. Is that boom, boom? You got to be careful. I'm not a creep, but you see it on the news, and it's always the person that leaves their Snapchat location on public, which is the dumbest thing ever. There's just so many things. People give us too much access. I mean, literally. TikTok sells our privacy and we don't care. Because it's so cool. I got rid of TikTok. I couldn't take it. I was looking up how to get over a breakup on YouTube. And then I'm getting all these breakup videos at 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, ah, I just want to sleep. I got to read the news in eight hours. WNBA star Brittany Griner met with U.S. Embassy officials yesterday inside the Russian jail. What are they even meeting with her about? Yeah, sucks. You're not going to be out until 2031. <laughs> Where she's being detained. The White House officials say Griner is, quote, doing as well as you can be expected. I don't even think you could do even well at all in Russia. You're in Russia. They hate us. Under the circumstances, yeah, they say securing her release remains a top priority. Griner was arrested in February at a Moscow airport. Russian authorities say that she was carrying vape canisters containing cannabis oil. In August, Brittany Griner was sentenced to nine years in prison. <laughs> so horrible. It's so funny. Like You'll go places that allow medical marijuana to be smoked. You'll see it and you go, they're all doing something that Brittany Griner serving nine years in prison for. And honestly, I know it sounds privileged that she should be let out because she's an American. But anybody that's like really wanting her to serve nine years is, is just racist or a creep. It doesn't affect you that much. If it was like Ted Nugent, everybody that's hating on her would be like, you got to let Ted Nugent out, man. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy Hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you about the best trainer in all of the Bay Area. I'm not going to lie to you and direct you to some trainer that's average. That's okay. I'm going to take you to the top-notch trainer, and that is Devin Prasad over at FitzHFitness.net. He's got memberships. He's got classes. He's got everything. And when you go to FitzHFitness.net and you sign up, just tell him I sent you, man. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. That's all I'll ever be. Whatever. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Listen to Hoppy Hour at any time, anywhere. Search Hoppy Radio on all major streaming platforms. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh yeah. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You tweeted me at Ryan Hobby Radio. You can always email me. Ryan Hobby Radio at gmail.com. All right, back to the news. Today in Deadbeat Dads. No! Happy Hot Topic! Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Especially you, Deadbeat Dads. Get from here, Nick. I have three kids. I have eight. Ryan Reynolds is poking fun at his pal Nick Cannon amid news that he is expecting another child. Man, I bet the douchebag energy is on a thousand when Ryan Reynolds and Nick Cannon are hanging out. Yeah, bro, we're going to overcompensate and have our midlife crisis because we can't believe we're 40. <laughs> How you 1982 babies doing? I'm coming soon in about 11 years. 
On Thursday, the Deadpool actor retweeted an update that the Wild and Out star has another baby on the way. We're gonna need a bigger bottle, wow. he joked. The hilarious troll came after Ryan had Nick star in a video for his company, Aviation American Gin, in June 2022. In the ad, the masked singer host made a special cocktail called Nick Cannon's Vasectomy ahead of Father's Day. It's almost Father's Day, and the one and only Ryan Reynolds asked me to help us all celebrate with the mother of all cocktails, the vasectomy. Lord knows I need one. Ryan and his wife, Blake Lively, are currently expecting their fourth child together. As Nick revealed, he has a new baby on the way, too. On Thursday, Alyssa Scott posted a series of photos with the 42-year-old from an intimate maternity photo shoot where the pair are both nude in the bathtub. Nick can also be seen kissing her belly while they both sit down in another- I hate him, man. He just views it as a game as, how many cannons can I have out there? Man. Our snap. The news comes after the duo's first child together, Zen, died in December. Well, that was sad, too. That was heartbreaking. I actually cried. I was in a really emotional mood, and I watched the uh, Nick Cannon announcement, and I was just like, come on, man. You don't need any more kids. 2021, following a battle with brain cancer, Alyssa shared the heartbreaking news on Instagram at the time, saying in part... It feels unbearable running without you now. I can't. And in this moment, I feel myself being carried by your sister, by God, by complete strangers encouraging me not to give up. It has been an honor and privilege being your mommy. I will love you for eternity. Nick also recently appeared in family photos with his twins, Zion and Zillian, with their mom, Abby De La Rosa. Abby is also pregnant with her third child, though it has not been confirmed who she's expecting the baby with. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. This week, we highlight another life well lived. Daniel Smith was born in Connecticut on March 11th, 1932, the son of a former slave. Nine yeah, in one lifetime, we are not that, we're not that removed from slavery. I love when racist people are like, oh, racism is, is over. Slavery wasn't that long ago or was so long ago, man. No, 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 no. You know how fast time goes? Imagine if you could live to 400, it would go by in a blink. So essentially, slavery would feel like two days ago. We're not removed from it at all. 20 years later, he died as perhaps the last child of an enslaved person in America. Smith's father, Abram, known as A.B., was born into slavery in Virginia during the Civil War. After emancipation, he moved his family north, eventually landing in Winstead, Connecticut, where he worked as the janitor at a clock factory. A.B. was 70 years old when his son Daniel was born. Daniel grew up to serve as an army medic in the Korean War, before returning home to attend Springfield College in Massachusetts, where he was voted student council president. After college, he worked for several years in Alabama on efforts to fight poverty and to promote adult literacy. Smith was there at the March on Washington in 1963 and crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama with Martin Luther King Jr. in 1965. Smith says his friends joked later that he had been the black Forrest Gump, turning up at moments in American history. In 1968, he moved to Washington to work in President Lyndon Johnson's Office of Economic Opportunity, later running an operation to create rural health centers across the country. Smith's work took him overseas as well, to places like apartheid South Africa. After his retirement, Smith became head usher at Washington's National Cathedral, where he escorted three presidents and their families. In January of 2009, Smith, the son of a slave, was brought to tears as he witnessed in person the inauguration of Barack Obama as the country's first black president. Daniel Smith, believed to have been the last living child of an American slave, died last month in Washington. He was 90 years old. Happy hour. Happy hour.
Happy Hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment is brought to you by... Uh, who do we have here? Quadpod.com. Q-O-D-P-O-D.com. Slash Ryan Happy When I tell you that they are the best podcast network out there, it's definitely because I'm there. Q-O-D-P-O-D.com. Slash Ryan Happy For all the latest shows of... Happy Hour. Happy Hour. This little Bizarre. guy. Bizarre. Buddy, if I had a peanut, I'd give Bizarre. it to you. Bizarre. I love you. Bizarre. I love you. Hey, who's Bizarre. got a peanut for turtle taste? Don't, he's allergic. That kill me. What are you looking at? Loser! You're a loser! Call Hoppy now. 856 49 Hoppy. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Area beat this morning. We are tracking a major shakeup in the social media world. Meta confirms it's slashing thousands of jobs today. 11,000. Good. It's everybody else's fault, not the leadership. I love when huge companies have major layoffs. It's not our fault for spending money the wrong way. It's your fault for working your ass off, having one job and having one salary, but you're doing nine other jobs and not getting nine salaries. We're going to abuse you. And then blame you when our leadership of us telling you how to do it fails. It's your fault, peasants. <laughs> Let's go to our private jets where we cheat on our wives. The parent company of Facebook and Instagram is laying off more than 11,000 employees. Oh, that's good. I bet those people really gave it their all to a job. That's 13% of its workforce. This comes not even a week after Twitter cut ties with almost half of its workers. Mm -hmm. In an overnight letter to workers, CEO Mark Zuckerberg said, I don't really care. I hold books up on my bookshelf with a bottle of barbecue sauce. I don't really know how to human. Say, said that he expected the company to keep growing at the start of the pandemic. Yeah, it's your fault, not my, just the way I run the dumb website and I literally suspend everybody and alienate myself. It's your fault for doing what I told you to do. Scumbag. But quote, I got that wrong. This. What? Uh, what would be the word? Sociopath. Yep. Just saying. He's definitely one. Oh, happy hot topic. Okay, moving on to Rihanna and ASAP Rocky. Ever since being arrested at LAX nearly seven months ago for an assault charge, ASAP Rocky has been in court multiple times, but Riri has not been in attendance. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like something she'd want to be really be involved with hanging around poor people. Well, Hollywood Life has learned exclusively why that is, and according to our source, Rihanna is not getting too involved in ASAP's case because he told her that yeah. as much as he loves her, it does not involve her. She has her plate full right now, and they are both confident that ASAP will get out of these charges. Now, our insider did add, if at any point, if Rihanna thought this was a dire situation, she would be there regardless. But she whatever, it might be dire if you were poor. <sighs> we're gonna turn now to the World Series champions. The yay. Houston Astros, hundreds of thousands of fans expected to turn out for a parade through yeah. downtown Houston this afternoon. Mm. Will Reeve is here now with the latest on all of that. What up, bro? Tell me about a sport that's dying at best. Good morning, Will. Good morning, Amy. No school for the kids today. Houston is going to be a scene, really, no doubt. Trust me, you can use all the education you can get in Texas. <laughs> for the Astros, they just lost... They lost two times all postseason. They thoroughly dominated everyone they faced all year. They were led by Dusty Baker, who after 25 seasons as a manager, finally gets his title. Comes on, Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. The Houston Astros, world champions. This morning, they've won the World Series. Now it's time for the Astros championship parade. Schools closing today, a city ready to celebrate. The Game 6 atmosphere in Minute Maid Park, electric. The Astros beating the Phillies 4-1, to the first home team to clinch the World Series in their own ballpark since the 2013 Boston Red Sox. Guys, they told me in spring training that they were going to win it. Now, what's next? Party. Party. Yeah. Astros 25-year-old sensation Jeremy Pena making... Yeah, what up, bro? 
history. He's the first rookie to win World Series MVP and ALCS MVP. And everyone's mad. They cheated five years ago. And even if, even, even if they're cheating now, it's got me so worked. I can't even say the word even. Even if they are cheating now, it doesn't affect your life. Who cares? In the same postseason. Man, you dream of this as a kid, you know? But yeah, I was playing T-ball in the backyard. Never thought this would happen. But it feels so far away. But, you know, we made it happen. The Ast Hell yeah, you made it happen. And you pissed off a lot of people. <laughs> Apple says it is scaling back on production of the iPhone 14 due to COVID restrictions. At its That's dumb. They just don't know what to do. They're just done. I don't think everybody needs a new phone every two years. Apple says it is scaling back on production of the iPhone 14 due to COVID restrictions at its main assembly plant in China. Okay. The company says the factory is operating at significantly reduced capacity and it will. Yeah, people don't really want to work for these big, creepy corp uh, corporations, man. Almost said corporations. <laughs> uh, you don't really want to work for Facebook. You don't want to work for Elon Musk or Apple. So they probably have less people. Warned that it would ship fewer units and that customers would experience longer wait times when ordering those devices. Uh, In recent weeks, the factory has grappled with employees fleeing the facility because... I can't take this. My, my life's too short. I can't take this. Employees fleeing the facility because of its strict COVID policies and outbreaks. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> COVID was three years ago. Get the hell out of here. Vicky, after a year of devastating and violent shootings around the country, some parents are searching for resources to help their children process the trauma. Mm -hmm. Some advocates say one solution could be right inside our libraries. It's weird. When I was a kid growing up in 2000, 2001, 2002, you get the point, graduated in 2012, uh, literally... We didn't, we had maybe four school shootings all together, it seemed like. Now you're having books in a library about how to cope with the chance of a school shooting? Man, even more reason why I don't want to be a father. Every day I'd be really scared, man. Shout out to the parents that deal with that. I, I could not. Here's NBC's Maya Eaglin. Mm -hmm. Books are just a really wonderful way to tackle very difficult topics. Michelle Gay experienced the unimaginable on December 14th, 2012, losing her youngest daughter, Josephine, in the Sandy Hook school shooting. Her two older daughters survived, and to help them cope with the tragedy, Michelle turned to children's books. It's just a natural way to have those conversations and support our kids. One book she shared with them was called The Ant Hill Disaster, about a boy ant afraid to go back to school after his ant hill is destroyed. Those funny little critters with their big eyes and um, um, and their rhyming language uh, really kind of helped the kids walk through and realize, okay, it's not so great right now, um, but little by little and all together, we're going to make our way through this. After the massacre at Uvalde's Robb Elementary School, the book I'm Not Scared, I'm Prepared by author Julia Cook was reprinted several times to meet demand, according to the National Center for Youth Issues, which published the book. It doesn't have to be scary. It's just one of those things that if a dangerous someone comes in the school, I have a plan and I know what to do. Demand has been growing steadily for kids' books that address traumatic events, like school shootings, according to NPD BookScan. Sales for books on violence, grief, and emotions have been increasing for nine straight years. Almost six million copies were sold in 2021, more than double the amount in 2012. Other books, like Police in Our Schools, talk about the role of safety officers. Who Let the Dog In is about why we don't let strangers into school buildings. But if you're a parent, these topics could still be hard to talk about. So I sat down with psychotherapist Nero Feliciano for some tips. We know there are some parents that feel like if these stories are introduced- So here's what I'm gonna do. I want all this, in I want all this information to get out there because I know I have a lot of people that listen that are parents. Uh, I will tweet that out at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Sad, sad times we live in. Oh, happy hot topic! Jessica Simpson has responded to her fans' recent comments and concerns. If Kim Kardashian, who comes off like the most confident person, is responding to haters, then that means that Jessica Simpson must be even less confident because she reeks of no confidence. She reeks of daddy issues and some awful perfume. The 42-year-old singer took to her Instagram on Sunday to share a video of herself singing her song, Party. Looking dead and looking like she did a lot of cocaine in her life. We have won. And she wrote in the caption her thoughts and feelings after fans took to the comment section on a Pottery Barn Kids ad that she... It's not even that she looks bad. She just looks old, bro. Old!
posted on Thursday, where many people expressed concern over how she looked, but she clapped back, right? Oh, she did. Being in part, I needed to be in my studio today because this is where I ground myself and heal. As much as I have learned to block out destructive noise, people's comments and judgments can still hurt deeply with their incessant nagging. You will never be good enough. The most important thing I have learned through the last five years without alcohol being a guard for escapism is that I can and always will get through it. I am capable of pretty much anything I care enough about to put my... Yeah, do it. If you're so capable, Jessica Simpson, and I'm not rooting for her to not be able to do it, I'm just saying, don't tell us that you're going to do it. Just do it privately. Hey, everyone. It's Allie for Hollywood Life with your Car Jenner Roundup starting today with Kendall Jenner and this totally sheer dress that she wore this weekend. Now, we know the model is not one to shy away from freeing the nipple, and her outfit at the 2022 LACMA Art and Film Gala was definitely reminiscent of that. In photos, which you can see here, Kendall wore a sheer black and silver dress that had a full mesh detail and some very low-rise bottoms. The rest of the Kardashians look like uh, a Sims character that would be called hot character. You know what I mean? Like hot chick. Like the, like the Kardashians are hot, but they look like cartoon characters. My man, Kendall Jenner. Bottoms. It's safe to say she pretty much stole the show. Yeah. But moving on to Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott because... Oh yeah, Travis, he's never cheated on her. <laughs> when I think of someone that's a good person that would never cheat on their wife or whatever she is, I think it's someone that watched his fans die at a fest. <laughs> These two are I wasn't laughing at the fans dying. I was laughing at the... Never mind. Just got just to gotta cover my ass. And Travis Scott because these two are still going strong. This weekend, while at Chris's birthday party, the rapper posted a photo of himself snuggling up with a beauty mogul. And of course... Man, she's got real side chick energy. They all do giving fans couple goal vibes travis oh yeah i, I want to be married to some i want to be in a relationship with somebody or whatever they do with somebody who watched his fans die at a music festival oh yeah that's a relationship goal being married to a sociopath took to his instagram to share a gorgeous pic where kylie is leaning back on him and he has his hand around her waist as they pose in front of a roaring fireplace yeah we're, we're so relatable we're in front of a fireplace you guys have been in front of fireplaces right we can human we should also mention that the reality star was dressed up as the famous momager along with her sisters in a hilarious birthday prank on their mom Had a <laughs> such a good prank you guys got her to the HL site to see the couple's recent pic together. And speaking of pictures, let's talk about Rob Kardashian making a rare appearance this week. Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna hang around with my siblings for a few minutes. Weekend. In honor of her mom's birthday, Kim posted a selfie on her Instagram from a birthday dinner that included Courtney, Chloe, Chris, Grandma MJ, and Mr. Rob. A world famous Grandma MJ morning show himself. Now it's unclear which day the black and white image was snapped since everyone was wearing different outfits from the dress like Kris Jenner prank party that they pulled on their mom. But Rob isn't too active on social media. So, so whatever, he was out there. He's like, I'm going to make a Facebook post. Why the hell not? You have another baby. Out. This is how I find out. Oh. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds on Good Morning America. They're asking him if he's going to have another daughter and he's playing the character that he had no idea <laughs> ryan reynolds you're so funny man because you shove us down your throat we always have to hear about ryan reynolds you have another baby up this is how i find out oh. <laughs> four i don't know who's more unfunny in this uh scenario of people will ferrell who hasn't been funny in about 15 years or oh my god i have a douchebag you're going to have a fourth baby. Yes. Ryan Reynolds is crossing his fingers for another girl. While appearing on the Today Show to promote his upcoming Christmas musical comedy, Spirited. The oh, I'm sure that and uh, that's going to be great. It's on Apple TV, and it's got Will Ferrell, and it's got Ryan Reynolds. So it's going to be a bunch of hilarity. Maybe in 2006 when humor was a little edgier and not corny. 46-year-old actor opens up about the baby he and wife Blake Lively have on the way, <gasps> admitting that he's hoping their fourth child will be a girl. Uh, it better be a girl, because that son's going to be neglected forever. You're going to have a fourth baby. Yes. Another girl? Four girl. Uh, no. I don't know. I, we, I don't, think, we never find out till. Oh. oh, whatever. You find out when the thing comes out, and you're like, oh, yay, or 
I'm going to hate you and take out my aggression on you during arguments. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by the best internet radio around. Let me tell you. ZRadioLive.com. ZRadio Live on Odyssey and TuneIn. Mm-hmm. Go there. And every Thursday at 5 p.m. East Coast time, 4 p.m. Central, it's Happy Hour. Happy Hour. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Finally, I'm one of those guys who can't wait to get to work in the morning. Like a dairy cow. Oh! Oh! Oh, yes! Yes! Oh! Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh yeah. 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Hobby Radio at gmail.com. And if you're listening on the iHeartRadio app, search up Hoppy Radio. Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Funny Trump is ready to be a wife. Yeah, I bet you're going to be so loyal. There's going to be no cheating there. Because when I think of rich people, they never cheat and make their lives more complicated than they need to be because they have no problems, so they want to manifest them. The 29-year-old bride-to-be celebrated her bridal shower with her sister, Ivanka Trump, mm. sister-in-law, Laura Trump, and Donald Jr.'s girlfriend, Kimberly Guilfoy, over the weekend in Miami. Yeah, they've really been together for a minute. Miami. Several attendees shared glimpses of the festivities on Instagram, including Ivanka, who shared a snap of Tiffany and... Oh, they look like a bunch of rich blondes. Wow, really innovative. Speaking of someone that's so innovative. Jimmy Kimmel is hosting the 2023 Oscars. Yay. More liberal jokes, demeaning humor, and talking down to us. He was cool like 15 years ago. Remember unnecessary censorship where he would show like the Looney Tunes like banging each other on TV? That was weird, man. Now he's like, I'm liberal. He did the man show. Shut up. Jimmy Kimmel is hosting the 2023 Oscars. Yeah. This is the third time that the comedian has stepped up to host the biggest night in movies, and he's ready to bring the laughs. Oh, nice. The Academy. So when are you going to bring the laughs? By leaving? <laughs> he seems like one of those ass wipes that when he enters the room, everybody pretends to be his friend, and then he leaves, and they're like, oh my God, is he punchable of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences made the announcement via Twitter, writing, introducing your 95th Academy Awards host, Jimmy Kimmel. Who is ready for all-time low ratings? Welcome back. Oh, whatever. They can have fun with that. Billie Eilish is getting cozy with her new man. Yeah, so weird seeing her all grown up. Weeks after going public with their romance, <sighs> Billy and her bae, Jesse Rutherford, are making their red carpet debut. In Mad- and they're wearing a Gucci blanket around. <laughs> cool. They're so edgy and wild. Speaking of the opposite of that. Looks like the romance is keeping steady between Gigi Hadid and Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, that's good. We love it. It's great. After sparking dating rumors weeks ago, a source... Yeah, he kind of like went on the Amazon Prime of dating celebrity women, which would be Priya or whatever that app is for the rich and famous, not the Tinder and Bumbles of our world. The, the really good one. And was like, I select Gigi Hadid to be in my bed next week. Call her agent. Source tells E.T. Gigi and Leo have been seeing each other and are very into each other. Yeah, he first kind of put out the bad signal. He's like, Gigi Hadid, want to have sex on one of the nicest yachts on his planet? But Gigi has been trying to keep things low-key with their relationship. Which she usually does. Yeah, we're definitely getting the hint, Gigi. Ah! The 27-year-old model and the 47-year-old actor have only been spotted out together a mere... Yeah, they're just banging behind closed doors. A couple of times. It's beyond my control. <gasps> so why are they keeping things so private? Um, well, our source tells us the pair is avoiding PDA to be mindful of Zane's feelings. <laughs> <laughs> 
listen. The perfect way to get over an ex is to admit to your ego that you're never going to have sex with that person again. And all the experience you had of having sex with that person is now going to be used with somebody else. And they're going to be glad it's not you. You're going to be like, oh, so much better with this person. Zane, buddy, when Leonardo DiCaprio is just bang in your ex, she's so glad it's not you. And that disgust and that level of non-respect should immediately be a turnoff. So when they're having to be private to pretty much help out Scott Disick Zane, yeah, you're letting her control the situation. Like, I'm sure I'm going to, my ex could get a girlfriend or boyfriend next week. I'd be like, okay. okay. I wish them nothing but the best. But when you're having to protect the person from finding out that you're dating them, that person needs to look themselves in the mirror and go, people keep dumping me because I'm a little controlling. Her ex, whom she shares, two-year-old daughter, Kai, and G. I didn't even know Zane was a dad, but he's so attentive. <laughs> G doesn't want to be disrespectful to him with her new relationship. Yeah, I'm getting banged out by this 50-year-old. Sorry, bud. Um, I think communication and just knowing you know what the other person needs and that um a lot of times it's the man needs sex and the woman's like ah, i'm not really into you anymore and you go okay bye happy hour happy hour happy hour will be right back oh yeah this following segment's been brought to you by fitsage fitness.net rich kate barber.net amir academy of martial arts at amiracademy.com and westchaseprinty.com. All right, let's come back and wrap this puppy up. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> happy hour. Happy hour. I got PhDs in four scientific disciplines. Really? Why do you think they call me Dr. Quinn? Um, I just thought that was a nickname. You know, like Dr. Dre. East Side. God, you're stupid. Hey, shut your hat. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet that the other stations are tuned in to. Jennifer Lopez is loving married life. In her new cover story for Vogue, the 53-year-old gushed over her, quote, empowering marriage to husband Ben Affleck, the importance of blending their family, and explained why she took his last name. Ah, uh, for attention. Cool. I wish them nothing but the best. Speaking of couples that have to let us know how much they're in love. Priyanka Chopra and Nick Jonas have major love for each other. <gasps> Access Hollywood is taking a look at some of their recent cutest moments. From how much they gush about each other in interviews and on social media, to the love they share for their daughter, Malti Marie. Mm -hmm. Kevin Jonas and Priyanka Chopra had an extra special Diwali this year. Oh, God. We're one of those rich couples where we just start like banging each other in public verbally. You ever been around rich people and they're like, oh, I, I love you so much, baby. And they're like, I love you more, baby. And you're like, Jesus Christ, we're at a dinner table. What are we doing here? My biggest regret. Yeah. I was watching it. I, I called you a slut. <gasps> Lauren Conrad is looking back at her time on Laguna Beach. The oh, it was 2005 when everyone was a slut orange county every every gender and not just singling out women everybody was a slut 17 years ago my biggest regret mm. i was watching it i i called you a slut lauren conrad is looking back at her time on laguna beach the real orange county and admitting her one regret the 36-year-old businesswoman was on Tuesday's episode of the Back to the Beach with Kristen and Steven podcast and revealed one thing she would redo from the hit reality show. I I called you a slut. I know. Well, listen, I'm I so you. sorry. Thank you. It was like, thank you. And like watching it, it was my like, 
I couldn't believe I did that because I think where I'm at now, like I would, I would never I tell another woman that I, or girl. And it was for me like the most embarrassing moment. I was like, oh, gross. Well, Kristen Cavallari also admitted there are some things she said on the hit MTV show that she now regrets. I called you a slut in a later like episode, and I also oh. it was I have so it right so embarrassed. Oh man, they're so embarrassed. We're gonna pretend to like each other on camera, but on the ride home, I'm gonna be like. But she really was one. <laughs> For the first time on election day, no NBA teams are scheduled to play. Instead, the league. Uh, no NBA games? Why? Because it's something really important? For the first time on election day, no NBA teams are scheduled to play. Instead, the league is promoting civic engagement and encouraging teams and fans to get out and vote. Yes. If you think, and this is not an original thought, but if you, nothing on the show is, if you think, what a surprise, if you think, that a politician cares about you, you're out of this world. The mindset that somebody voting for a politician and the mindset that they care about you is the same as a dude going to a gentleman's club and getting a lap dance and being like, oh, um, I'm trying to think of a name. Vanessa really cares about me when I give her 80 bucks and she rides me for five minutes. Yeah, oh, she's so into me. Speaking of somebody that would be like that. There's been a lot of weird drawbacks like here and there with like reaching that level of like the notoriety. Yeah. Julia Fox is speaking out. The un um, I remember her. Remember her? Uncut Gems. Cut Gems actress is sharing about how her past relationship with Kanye West has affected her acting career. While on her pal Emily Ratajkowski's High Low with Imrad, a podcast on Tuesday. With a combined IQ of 100 on that thing. She said she has got less if that. offers her role since her very public relationship. With acting, it's, I don't know, I also kind of feel like after this whole like the big relationship and all mm. the like things that followed. Yeah. I definitely felt like, oh, I feel a shift in like the acting way, like not in a good way. Mm. You didn't have any roles before. And uh, you don't have any after? You can blame him all you want, but maybe it's uh, people don't want to hire you, and it's just now you're noticing it. Happy hour. Happy hour. And like that, he's gone. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over.